everyone, I'm Ellie, and thanks so much for tuning in. Today we are going to be working on all of the accessories and extra bits that go along with my Lucia cosplay from Mermaid Melody Pitch Pitch Pitch. This is an awesome series that I have loved since I was a little girl, and I'm so happy to be finally cosplaying from it. This is part three in a series, so if you haven't caught the other two parts, make sure you go click right up there and it'll take you right to those videos. Today we're going to be working on Lucia's accessories. This includes her gloves, her boots with some wonderful swirly details, and so, so, so much more. So I hope you guys are ready to get crafting. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're working on today is Lucia's gloves. For these gloves, I did take a pair of pre-made satin gloves. I used pre-made because I know they fit well and I don't have to worry about fudging around making a glove pattern. Gloves are not the easiest thing to make and if I don't have to make them, I usually choose not to. To create the gravity-defying ruffles along Lucia's gloves, I decided to use zip ties. To start off, I made my pattern for my ruffle. My ruffle is a bit of a curved rectangle, I guess you could say. It curves so that way it'll fit around my wrist nicely and will flare out a bit more after I pleat it. For each glove, I cut out two pieces of the pink crepe satin, one of the pink glitter tulle, one of our sequined material, and then one of our darker pink lining. With all of our pieces cut out, I went ahead and stitched the corresponding pieces together. I started by connecting the flat ends of all of my pieces together and then I went ahead and attached the lining to the fashion layer for each of the ruffles. Of course, just like our big sparkly skirt, I also had to remove sequins on our sparkly gloves so that way they wouldn't get caught up in my stitches. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add some zip ties. To do this, I created two boning channels in our light pink lining layer. So using just a little bit of satin, I created these boning channels and inserted these zip ties. These are just regular zip ties that you can buy at the store. I've trimmed off the little bit that locks in the zippy part, but I've also trimmed off the loose bit on the edge and then filed it down so they are nice smooth edges and won't be poking me or sticking out of the fabric. With those inserted, we're now ready to go ahead and pleat our ruffle. So I've pleated around the entire thing until I can easily slip it on and off my wrist. At this point, I've basted that on and made sure everything looks the way I want it to. And now I can attach it to the glove, putting right sides together, so the right side of my ruffle with the right side of my glove. I'm going to stitch all the way around that tubular part and then turn it inside out. Now, if I would have had more time, I would have added a satin binding or something here to stop it from fraying. But alas, I was running out of time and just left that as a raw edge. To make these gloves have a little bit more pizzazz, I'm also going to be adding some pearls onto them. You could also use separate bracelets, but I wanted to make this cosplay in as few pieces as possible so it's easy to transport and put on quickly. So I went ahead and beaded some pearls all the way along the wrist seam of both of my gloves. On my right glove, I also attached my power up pendant, which was made with a button and a resin cast gem that I painted and added some rhinestones to. While this isn't how the bracelet looks canonly, I went through quite a few iterations of this bracelet and did not find any way to make it that I actually liked. So I decided that I was better off just attaching it and making it match the left one as well. All right, so we have two gloves. Now let's move on to our boots. Again, we have these gravity-defying ruffles. The pattern for these ruffles is the same base shape as the one for the gloves. It is a curved rectangle. However, this one also tapers and gets smaller at the edges to create a bit of a more wavy and oceany look to our ruffle. So just like the glove, I cut out all of my materials, but rather than using zip ties, since zip ties, while sturdy for the gloves, were not enough to keep these ruffles standing straight for an entire day at a convention. Instead, I decided to use craft foam. I know, it sounds a little crazy, but it works really, really well. So we're also going to cut a piece of craft foam to the same shape as our pattern piece. This craft foam is going to go in between the lining and fashion layer of our light pink crepe satin. With it hidden in between those layers, you can't see it anymore, and it works as a great stabilizer. 
So once our ruffles have been basted together, everything is in place and we have that craft foam in there, we're gonna go ahead and pleat these onto our boot. The boot I'm using is an older pair of boots that I bought off of Amazon for maybe $10. They're nothing fancy, but I've trimmed off the top and created a nice V shape on them. So I'm going to pin my ruffle to my boot, pleating it where necessary. There's gonna be about four or five pleats to each boot. And once I have that pinned into place, now we get to hand stitch it to the boot. Yay! This part was really, really frustrating and took a long time. I don't wanna ever do it again. <laughs> but I did go through and hand stitch through the boot and through the craft foam and connected the entire ruffle until we got to the zipper end of our boot in which I just finished the pleats off. I didn't connect it to the actual boot. With our ruffle in place, we can now start adding some details. I'm gonna start by adding on our pink swirly piping. For this piping, I actually used three quarters inch piping and I covered it with our pink sparkly spandex. And then I was able to attach it to the boot just like I did with the ruffle. I pinned it into place and then hand stitched the top and the bottom of our piping onto the boot. But again, once we got to the zipper, rather than attaching the piping directly to the boot, I attached it to our ruffle, which was still freestanding, so that way I can take it on and off and easily unzip these boots. Now that the outside of our boots look great, we need to make the inside look good as well. I'm going to use a piece of white satin bias tape, and I'm going to attach it on the inside of the boot all the way around the top seam where we attach to the ruffle. This way we have no open seams and everything looks nice and clean. Okay, so with everything stitched together, you should be able to put the boot on and zip it up. Now we just need to finish closing that ruffle, and to do so, we're going to attach a snap to the swirly part of our pink piping and onto our boot. This way, you can easily snap the boot on and off and then unzip it to take it off of your foot. All right, so our boots are looking really good. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tack our pleats together at the top edge. This is just going to keep everything nice and compact and keep it standing so it doesn't start to fall down and droop throughout the day. All right, so our gloves and boots are finished. So is most of the sewing at this point, and we are rocking it. The next thing we're going to do is work on some of the little jewelry accessories, like Lucia's pearl necklace. To make Lucia's necklace, I created a 3D modeled and printed shell, which I'm going to talk about in a later video. I think 3D modeling needs its whole own video. It was such a fun process. But this is the finished product. It came to me as a white PVC blank, which I had to first sand off any imperfections. Then I went ahead and covered it with a clear layer of Mod Podge. I did a couple layers. This was just filling in any extra gaps and making it as smooth as possible. After this, I painted it with my light pink acrylic paint. It took a couple layers to get it to be a nice solid color. And then after that, I was able to add my hot pink details and a little bit of shading. Once I was finished with my paint job, I added a layer of glitter using Mod Podge mixed with glitter glue. And then I finish it off with another layer of Mod Podge, this time a gloss coat. I also use this painting process for all of her other 3D printed accessories, like the microphone and the hair shells. At the same time, I also painted her smaller pearls and larger pearls, so that way they would all be a consistent color. With everything painted, we are now ready to create this shell necklace. Using some clear jewelry wire, I first attach it to my shell pendant, and then on each end, I go through and attach our small pearl beads. Like I said, these have been painted, so it can be kind of hard to get through the holes at some point, but you have lots of extra beads, so I was able to just discard the ones that weren't working with me. Once I got the pearl strands to a length that I liked, I went ahead and attached my closure using a loop and a hook. And of course, how could I forget Lucia's buff bow? To make this, I used the same pink sparkly spandex that I've been using for the piping and other various parts on this costume. I created a bow pattern based a lot on Sparkle Pipsy's pattern, which if you haven't checked it out, I do suggest you check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is a very simple bow shape, and once I had cut out my pattern, I went ahead and ironed on some interfacing and stitched my two pieces together. Now I can turn it inside out and I have a bow shape. However, this bow is very large and very, very heavy. So to help it stand up, I decided to put a piece of craft foam inside of the bow. 
So inside of the top bow piece, I inserted this piece of craft foam, and now it's able to stand up all on its own and doesn't need any sort of stabilizers. Lucia's bow, of course, has these very long waterfall-like tails. To create these tails, I extended a basic bow tail pattern and added a bit of curve to one of the edges. This way, when I pleated it together, the curve would fall very nicely and make it look a lot like a waterfall. For the bow tails, I did not interface them since they don't need to be sturdy or standing up, and I think this fabric has a beautiful drape all on its own. So I cut two pieces of this pattern, stitched them together, flipped it inside out, and suddenly I had a bow tail. So now that I have all my bow components, it's time to put them together. I'm going to start by pleating my tails into a way that I like them, and once I have them there, I'm going to base them together at the top. And now I'm going to go ahead and pleat my main bow body into a way that I like it, so it looks like it has been held together at the center. Now to create a knot, we're going to simply take a tube of our material, stitch it together, flip it inside out so we have a nice clean edge, and we're going to wrap this around the pleated part of our bow body. At the same time, we're also going to insert our bow tails so that way everything is held together in a nice tight hug by this bow knot. At which point, you can go ahead and stitch the end of the bow knot together. I've been doing this by machine recently. If you pull everything nice and tight, it holds it really, really well. But you can also do this by hand if you'd like. In the end, to attach my bow to my bodice, I used a couple of flat back pins and attached two to the center and two to each of my bow points just to make sure they are standing up and nice and perky. And now Lucia is almost done. The last thing we need to work on is her wig. However, this is a pretty intense styling job, so I'm going to save that for another video. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. I loved working on Lucia, and I'm so happy to see that you guys have been enjoying it as well. If you have enjoyed it, or if you've learned something new, be sure to leave a comment below so I can know about it, and give me a thumbs up so I know that you like what I'm working on. Thank you guys so much for all of your support, and as always, keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!